here we go. This is a, a unit from that uh, uh, Stu Schwartz website that I like to use at this point in time, and it deals with using the application of the derivative. And the first thing we want to look at is uh, this linear motion. I mean, how does how can we use derivatives to describe uh, particle the motion of particles on its line, on a line? And so usually you're going to see uh, the position function is denoted by s of t, or if it talks about, um, so that's if it's like a general position function, um, and I'm just realizing I didn't use s of t or x of t, I always use s of t. Uh, x of t is if it's moving along the x-axis, y of t if it's going up and down the y-axis. So there's some things, some real life things that dealing with the horizontal and vertical motion, and one that I thought of was for a horizontal, you could be a train on a track. I don't know, maybe you can think of some other ones. A vertical would be like a, uh, well, like any projectile motion would be, you could talk about up up and down. I mean, uh, um, I'll have to remember to show you that video, too, about that, about the, about the cannonball, about the Civil War cannon. Okay, so, uh, anyways, what are we going to do? So this first example they're talking about, um, so here's, a, here's a, a function that gives us the position along the x-axis. Of course, it tells us that, plus they use that x of t notation. And we're going to evaluate this for t equals 0, and 1, 2, 3, and 4. So um, x of 0, well, you substitute 0 in for all the t's, and you're going to get 3. So 0, 3 is... Uh, the first thing, and notice we don't, I, I can't really graph this as an x, like a scatter plot, so I'm just going to deal with graphing the y. So at time 0, it starts at 3. And then I'm going to evaluate uh, f of 1, or x of 1. So x of 1 is going to be, let's see, 1 squared is 1, minus 2, minus 3. That should be negative 4. So I've got the I've got the ordered pair one negative four and all I'm going to really graph is the negative four. And then at t equals two, well I've got the point two, and then if I look at my function, I've got two squared is four, minus two times two is four, minus three. That's back. It means it's back at negative three, and I've got the point. 2, negative 3. Then we're going to find the y value or the x value, the, the where it is on the x-axis at time equals 3. So 9 minus 6 minus 3, well, that's 0. And then our last one is going to be at t equals 4. So 4 squared is 16, um, minus 8 is 8, minus 3 more is 5, so it ends up at 5. So the, 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 what it did is it went from 3, all the way down to negative 4, then it came back to negative 3, came back to zero, and then it jumped all the way up to um, five. So there's some left-hand movements, right-hand movements, etc. It changed direction back here at t equals four. So that, that's important, and we'll find out how to deal with that. Okay, then we're talking about um, you know, it's not normally we don't care too too much about the actual values. What we're really going to care about is whether the velocity is negative, or if the velocity is positive, or when it's equal to zero, because that means it stopped. Okay, and all they're doing this table is tell you if you're going on a horizontal line left right, it's moving left, moving right. Here, if it's a vertical line, it's going up, going down. And then this is an important thing to think of, think of, and if you're in physics, you've already learned this. Uh, that speed is the absolute value of the velocity because the velocity is direction and magnitude. 
In other words, uh, like a like a like a, a great size. Um, so as, when I have, if I have a velocity of negative four, that tells me it's going four units per unit of time, four units of distance, the units of time, and it also tells me that it's either going up or down or left or right. Where speed would just be four, right? Four units. Um, so then the acceleration function is just the second derivative. I don't know if you've talked about that yet. It's which and then remember the second derivative is just the derivative of the first derivative. And then this is an important thing to keep in mind right here. The acceleration second well, acceleration usually it's always time squared on the bottom. And that makes sense. I think of it as the velocity being linear units per unit time. For every second, it's also changing, so time times time. Might help to remember that. And what else we got going here? Oh, then talks about um, the velocity, or the acceleration. Yep. And, uh, what device on the car lets us change the velocity? In fact, there's two of them. I'm hoping you're thinking that you said the accelerator and the brake. Okay, now if the acceleration's zero, that doesn't mean the vehicle stopped. And they're asking us what 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 devices on cars keeps the acceleration equal to zero. And I hope you're thinking I won't say it right the second. Think about it. What 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 thing keeps our velocity constant? What keeps our speed constant? And that's the cruise control. Okay. So it also when you have positive acceleration, that does not mean you're moving to the right. For suppose you're biking to the left and a gust of wind comes up blowing you to the right, what's going to happen well your 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 velocity is going to slow down right cuz it's harder to harder to ride so let's do some math now <clears throat> some calculus so what's the first derivative they're looking for the velocity function they're looking for the acceleration function remember the velocity function is the first derivative of the position function and i'm seeing a power function so we can use the power rule i'll bring the 2 down in front so 2t and the derivative of negative 4t is negative 4. And then if we're going to take the derivative of that, because remember, um, the acceleration is the same thing as the derivative of the velocity, which is the same thing as the second derivative of the position function. And that will just be a constant 2. And now we're going to start our first little bit of an analysis on this. Um, so we're going to do some some thinking. We're going to do some evaluating. Get my papers here. I did actually do this one out before I sat down and do this video. So s of zero. I'm going to substitute zero in into this equation here into the position equation, right? So zero minus zero plus two is two. Then I'm going to substitute zero into the velocity function. If I drop zero into there, I'm going to get negative four. And the absolute value of that is the speed. So that's four. And then the acceleration is a constant two. And let's see, let's finish filling out the, the, these values first. Then I'm going to substitute in one into the position function. One minus four is negative three, plus two is negative 1. Now I'm going to substitute 1 into the velocity function. So 2, uh, 2 minus 4 is negative 2. So the velocity is negative 2 units per unit of time. I guess seconds is what it is. And then the speed is going to be a positive 2 and the acceleration is that constant 2 because that's a constant function. And then when x equals 2, or when t equals 2, we're going to do 4 minus 8 is negative 4, plus 2 is negative 2. Then I get a substitute in 2 into the velocity function. 
So 2 times 2 is 4, minus 4 is 0. Then we're going to substitute in 2 into, uh, actually, if it's the velocity is 0, the speed is 0, and then the acceleration is constant 2. Now we're going to use 3. 9 minus 12 is negative 3, plus 1 is negative 1. Then we get to drop 3 into the velocity function. 3 times 2 is 6, minus 4 is 2. Has a speed of 2 then, and the acceleration is also 2. Sounds like a Bradford phone number. So then we're going to do 4. 16 minus 16 is 0, plus 2 is 2. Now we're going to drop 4 into the velocity function. 2 times 4 is 8, minus 4 is 4. And the speed is 4, the acceleration is still 2. Last one, 25 minus 20 is 5, plus 2 is 7. The velocity, we're going to substitute in 5 into our velocity function. 5 times 2 is 10, minus 4 is 6. Uh, speed is 6, and the acceleration is a constant 2. So now we're going to think about the analysis, the description of what's happening. Well, it starts at 2, and then because the velocity is negative and we're on the x-axis, this is moving left, and then... Because the, because the velocity is a different sign than the acceleration, that means they're fighting against each other. This is like riding the bike into the wind, your bicycle into the wind. It's slowing down. Next one. Let's see. At x equals 1, or t equals 1, it's, the velocity is negative, so it's moving left again. And... Because the velocity and the acceleration are different signs, they're fighting against each other. It's still slowing down. Then at t equals 2, the velocity is 0. So that means it's stopped. It's not moving at all. At t equals 3, the velocity is positive. So that tells me it's moving to the right. And because the acceleration is also positive, they're working together kind of like the ball when you throw a, a basketball into the air it slows down on the way up because gravity is fighting against it and it's slowing down that positive velocity but then when the ball is coming down both those both those the acceleration and the velocity are negative so it speeds up so this is speeding up um, at t equals 4 Velocity is positive, acceleration is positive, so it's moving to the right and speeding up again. And the same thing happens at t equals 5. Positive velocity, positive acceleration, it's moving to the right, speeding up. And then I guess if we could graph these points, let's see, t equals 0, it's, um, it's at 2, and then it moves to negative 1. So it's moving to the left and slowing down. Then it goes from negative 1 to negative 2. So it's moving to the left again. And it's slowing down again. And then it reverses direction at 2 and it goes back to 1. And because it's positive, positive, it's actually speeding up. And then from 1... And from negative 1, I mean, it's going up to 2. Notice the same unit of time, and it traveled a lot faster. So it is speeding up, and it's going right, of course. And then it ends up at 7, and look, the one second more, look how much further it went. Definitely speeding up. Okay, so these sign charts help us make sense of it. It's not going to be enough for the test, but it'll certainly help us make sense of it. So the first thing we want to do is take the derivatives. So the first derivative is our velocity. And that's going to be 2t minus 6 using the power rule. Then we're going to take the second derivative. And that's just a constant 2. And then here's what Stu Schwartz is talking about with a, with a sign chart. 
I'm going to draw a number line. I'm going to start it at zero. And then I've got to ask myself, when does this function, when does this velocity function equal zero? Well, if you set this equal to zero, that happens at t equals three. And that's the only place it's, that's equal to zero. So that's the only place it has stopped. So this is my velocity function. And now I'm going to pick a number in that range, in between zero and three. One works pretty well. 2 minus 1 is, is a negative number, so I'm just going to put a negative. And then when it's bigger than 3, it turns positive, of course. So I pick 10, say, that's going to be 20 minus 6, positive number. Then I'm going to make another sign, to another number line. That I'm going to call that my acceleration. That doesn't have any places where it changes, so every place along this, it's positive. Now we're ready for our now we're ready for our uh, position chart or position graph position number line motion number line sorry so this is motion and I'm going to collapse all these numbers from both the graphs above onto this and of course it's just zero and three and then I want to compare if you look at that table uh, can I move that table back down? Look at that table. I want to compare the velocity to the acceleration, and wherever they're the same sign, they're speeding up. See, when they're both negative, when they're both less than zero, it's speeding up. When they're both positive, it's speeding up. Okay, when when it's when the acceleration is zero, the velocity is not changing. When the when the velocity is zero, it's stopped. Um, accelerating right, I don't know how much is how much sense that makes. I mean, I guess at the moment in time it stopped, you think about it still trying to move. I mean, what is that, momentum? Um, but I wouldn't worry too, too much about, about that. If it stopped, it stopped, and that's probably good enough. Um, so we're going to compare. Velocity is negative. Acceleration is positive. That tells me I'm moving to the left, and it's slowing down. So do you see the way I'm do, using those arrows? We know it stopped at t equals 3. And then let's go to the right of 3. So I'm, then I'm comparing positive velocity. So it's moving, moving right. And, I'm, and because the acceleration is the same sign, the acceleration is the same sign, that means it's going to be speeding up. Okay, we'll get into some justifications more in a little bit. So let's try part B. So what's the velocity? What's the first derivative? And I'm hoping you can start doing this in your sleep now. We said 3t squared minus 6t. When is this equal to 0? We probably ought to do a little work right now with that. The last one was very easy, but this one not quite so much. So I'm seeing it's 0 at zero it's also zero at positive two then I'm going to do the acceleration which is s double prime of t and I don't know why I stuck a prime like a of t that's not what I'm doing it's velocity a double derivative of the velocity a double derivative of the position first derivative of the velocity and so the derivative of this will be 6t minus 6. And we know this equals 0 when t equals 1. So let's make our number line graph. So here's a velocity graph, velocity number line. It's 0 and at 2. And if I pick a number between 0 and 2 like 1, that's positive, that's negative, so the whole expression is negative. If I pick a number greater than 2, like 4, positive, positive, the whole expression is positive. Now I'm going to do a number line for the acceleration. That had 1, 0 at t equals 1. And if I pick a number between 0 and 1, the acceleration is negative. And greater than 1, it's going to be positive. positive. 
Then I'm going to do a motion line. And I'm going to drop all those zeros or all those va values, critical values we call them, onto this motion line. And then I'm going to compare velocity and acceleration. So between 0 and 1, there, the acceleration is negative. Uh, the velocity is negative. The acceleration is negative. It's moving left, but it's speeding up. Between 1 and 2, we've got a positive acceleration, but a negative velocity. So it's moving left, but it's slowing down. At t equals 2, of course, it's stopped. And then it changes direction, because now the velocity is positive, and so is the acceleration. So it's moving to the right, because the velocity is positive, and it's also speeding up, because both the both the acceleration and the velocity have a sign that's positive. Okay? So this is what I was talking about a minute ago. I'm on the AP test. You can't just do a sign chart. They won't give you the points for it. You have to make the statement that uh, when is it, like uh, if it's speeding up, you're going to tell me that, tell us that the velocity and acceleration, or you could write S prime and S double prime have the same signs. And when they're opposite signs, it's slowing down. So that's the kind of justification you need to include. So let's take a look at another problem. So we're gonna we're gonna do some math with this, do, do some calc with it. So let's see. S prime of t is v of t, and I'm seeing 2t minus 6. S double prime of t, which is a of t, I'm seeing 2 just like before. So now let's do a number line. And uh, S of T is, is 0 at... Is that right? Boy, that doesn't seem like it's right. At 2. Alright. Alright. I think we've already... It feels like we've already done this. Must be a similar thing. So when T equals 3, uh, the... The velocity is zero. It's the particle stopped. Better label what the heck I'm talking about. So I'm going to pick a number between zero and three. Well, between zero and three, it's one. Well, that's going to be only one. The, both those will be negative. So that whole expression is negative. And then when I pick a number bigger than three, like say ten, well, that'll be a hundred minus sixty minus two. Well, that's definitely going to be a positive number. And then I know that a of t is a constant positive 2. So for my motion, between 0 and 3, I've got a negative velocity but a positive acceleration, so it's moving left, slowing down. When I get the other side of 3, I've got a positive velocity, a positive acceleration, so I'm moving right and speeding up. And uh, I've said this verbally, what I was looking at, how I said that one was positive, one was negative to slow down, or that they're both the same sign to speed up. So that's the kind of thing you have to write on a paper problem. Okay, let's see. S prime of t equals 3t squared minus 6t. And that equals 0. That's 0 and at 2. Then I'm going to take the second derivative. So S double prime of t, which equals a of t, is going to be 6t... minus 6. Where does that equal 0? At t equals 1. So let's draw a number line. That's the velocity. If we're looking at the velocity in between 0 and 1, I'm going to see that this is negative and this is positive, so that's going to give me a negative 
expression. And as soon as I get bigger than 2, they're both positive. Now for the acceleration, what's different about this one is we, it isn't constant. It changes at t equals 1. And to the left of 1, um, this is a smaller number than this, so it's negative. To the right of 1, the 6t is larger, so that's positive. Now to draw the motion. The 0, 1, and 2. And here I'm seeing a negative velocity, a negative acceleration. So that's moving, moving left, speeding up, because they're both negative, both derivatives of negative. Then between 1 and 2, I've got a negative velocity, so that's moving left. But I've got a positive acceleration, so they're fighting one another. It's slowing down. Then to the right of 2, let's see, to the right of 2, everything's positive. I knew that. I've got that right there. I'm doing this fairly late at night. Sorry. Um, so because both the acceleration and the velocity, are there, I said that backwards, velocity and acceleration are the same sign, it's moving right, whoops, it's moving right, it's moving right, and it is speeding up, okay, because acceleration velocity are the same sign. We know it's moving right because my velocity is positive. Uh, I know it's moving left because here, because my velocity is negative. And I guess that's it for this page. So, what is the object's velocity when it meets, reaches its maximum height? It is zero. What is the object, when the object hits the ground, what's its final position? Zero. So, what we do, and this is where calculus kicks in, you were doing all this stuff in pre-calc and in Algebra 2 without knowing derivatives, but with the nice thing about the derivatives, it's uh, you can you can do do it do it with derivatives. So when you get really messy functions, the same properties still hold. <clears throat> so for this problem, we need to think about. Let's just get an initial velocity of 112. It's launched vertically from ground level, so the initial height is zero. So s of t equals negative 16t squared plus 112t. Uh, t, not v. Uh, let's see here. 16t squared plus 112t. So they want us to find the velocity and the speed, so I'm going to take the first derivative. So that's negative 32t plus 112. Then we're going to find the velocity at, at 3. So s prime of 3 means I'm just going to substitute. So negative 3 times negative 32 is negative 96 plus 112 would be 16. And that's, of course, the speed. And what is the units? Feet per second? I won't write that because I'm running out of space. And then we're going to find s prime of 5. Well, if you do that, um, 5 times negative, one, negative 32 is, is negative 160, plus 112 is going to be negative 48 feet per second. That's the velocity. And remember, the speed is just going to be the positive of that. So then how high will the ball rise? Well, the, we know the ball will rise until the velocity is zero, and then it starts falling back down. So what we're looking for is where does that first derivative equal zero? So where does zero equals negative 32t plus 112? Well, if we solve that, I'm going to get 3.5. So t equals 3.5 seconds. And that's when it happens, and then what I'm going to do is have to evaluate the original function for 3.5, not 3.3, .3, but 3.5.
so that means I'm going to take and replace t with 3.5. And when I did that on my calculator earlier, I came up with, let's see, what did I come up with? 196 feet. And then we're going to find the speed when the ball hits the ground. Well, I'm going to look for, um, let's see. I want to know when does S of T equal zero. So basically, I'm going to, I can factor that original original value out. Let's see. So what is the original? So I can factor a t out. I could probably take out another number, but since I'm just going to solve it with a calculator, what's the point? I'm looking for where does that equal zero? Well, when it's zero, that, that's certainly a given, so we'll just disregard that. So it's basically going to work out to be 112 or negative 112 divided by 16. And that's t equals 7, I believe. Let's see, 112 divided by 16. Yeah, that's when t equals 7. So then I'm going to find, I'm getting, I have to squeeze this in up here. So then I'm looking for s prime of 7, which is 7 times thir negative 32 plus 12. So negative 32 times 7 plus 112. And I came up with a negative 112, let's see, speed, so I want the, just the positive. So it's 112 feet per second. Interesting that it's the same as the initial value. I guess that makes sense, because if you start it off, throw, if it gets start throwing off at 112 feet per second, it's going to come back down at the same speed. So I guess that's not so strange. There we go. Now we're down to the last set of questions in this page. And we know that we got free fall on the surface of Mars. And they're giving us the equations. So I guess all I really have to do is, because we're looking for how long would it take. Uh, let's see. So when I did this earlier, I said, OK, I took the derivative. Um, so S prime of t for Mars is going to be, I bring the, to pi, just the power rule, right? I'm going to bring the 2 down in front. And that's going to be negative 30 or 3.72t. And I want to know when does that speed equal uh, 144.7. And since I'm looking for speed, I'm going to ignore the negative. So basically, it's 144 divided by 3.72. And I came up with 12.016 seconds. Then for Earth, S prime of t equals uh, 9.8 t, and I'm not going to worry about the negative again since I'm looking for speed. So 44.7 equals 9.8 t. I came up with t equals 4.561. Makes sense that it takes less time to speed up because there's more gravity on Earth. And of course, in Jupiter, it'll be even higher, so or even shorter time. So S prime of t in Jupiter is negative 22.88t. And then we're going to, again, we're going to set that equal to 44.7. I divide those, I get 1.954 seconds. And these are all seconds. And that kind of confirms what we know. Um, higher, higher acceleration due to gravity is going to take less time to get there. So for this last page, I know they're telling me they're telling me the they're, they're telling me the position on the, uh, the the position function on the surface of the moon being you know whether balls thrown up or rocks thrown upwards vertically. There's that initial value, ish, initial velocity. And notice that's the v sub zero they stuck in the formula, and they just wrote it backwards because of the negative. Uh, leading coefficient. So to find the velocity, we take the first derivative. So s prime of t equals 24 minus 1.6t. All I'm doing is applying the power rule to both of those functions. Then to find the acceleration, I have to take the derivative of this. Well, the 24 is just 0. The derivative of that is 0. And the derivative of negative 1.6t is negative 1.6. 
So it's a constant uh, acceleration. How long did it take the rock to reach its highest point? Well, that's we know that happens when s prime of t equals zero. So when does 24 minus 1.6 t equals zero? Well, if I solve that, I came up with t equals 15. Subtract 24 divided by negative 1.6, right? How high does that surf? How high does that rock go? So here we're looking for what's s of 15. So I'm replacing the t's with my 15. I calculated that earlier, and I got 180 meters. So then I'm at being asked, how long did it take for the rock to reach half of its maximum height? So if the maximum height is 180, half of that is 90, and I'm going to solve this equation that 24t minus 0.8t squared. That's because that's a position function. So that's just a quadratic equation. We're going to run, set it equal to 0. So where am I going to write this? I'm going to write this up here. So negative, negative 0.8t squared plus 24t minus 90 equals 0, and I'm just going to use the quadratic formula for that. And when I did this earlier, I got 15. Let me see if I get that now. Program, let's see, A is what? Negative 0 0.8, and then 24, and then negative 90, and I didn't get 15 this time. I came up with... Uh, came up with uh, 4.393 was the first time, and then the second time was a 25.6, and I won't write that down, because I think they're asking, looking for just the first one. Okay, so how long was the rock aloft? So when does S of t equal zero? So that's going to be, uh, you. we could factor it out. Why don't we just factor it out? t times 24 minus 0 0.8t equals 0. Well, the one of them is 0, which we won't worry about. The other one, we're we'll just going to set this equal to 0 and solve it. Um, and I came up with 30 seconds. Actually, as I'm realizing, as I'm doing that answer... Up here, if we knew it took 15 seconds to reach its maximum height, and this is a parabola with a line of symmetry, we'd just have to double that to get to 30. Well, that's a little easier. Latin, last part, find the rock speed when it hits, hit the moon. So what's S prime of 30? Well, if we know the initial, it's thrown from the surface, uh, just to bring some reason from some work we did before. If we know it's thrown vertically upward from the surface of the moon and the initial velocity is 24 meters per second, when it comes back down, it should also be doing 24 meters per second. So let's evaluate 24 minus 1.6 times 30. Uh, yeah, that should be negative 24. Let's hope it is. 24 minus... 1.6 times 30, I got negative 24. So that reasoning is correct. Uh, and then, what is it, meters per second? Question number eight. A ball is dropped from the top of the Empire State Building. So that's going to be S of t equals negative 16 t squared because the initial velocity is zero. So when is that height equal to zero? Oh, sorry, plus 1250, because that's the initial, the state, the Empire State Building is that tall. So we're going to solve that equation. When is that equal to zero? So I'm going to subtract, I'm just going to erase this part. I'm going to subtract uh, 1250, then I'm going to divide by, divide by negative 16, and I came up with, uh, 
8.839. Oh. Yeah, because then I gotta take the square root of that answer, right? Because it's t squared. I better make sure I did that. So let's see, 11250 divided by 16, then take the square root of that. Yeah, that's what I got. Then find the speed of the ball at the point of it, at the time at this at impact. So s prime of t equals negative 32t, and then remember the derivative of 1250 is zero. So what is s prime of 8.839? And I can't did this earlier. I came up with well, it was negative, but um, I made it positive because they are looking for speed. I came up with 282.843, and that's feet per second. Question 9. Okay, yes. So here's a function. This is why I like this problem. Here's a function. You don't know how to take the derivative of the natural log. So we're going to use the calculator. So the process I used on the calculator was this. So I put the function in y1. I ran my derivative program to get it to graph the uh, to graph the uh, uh, the, the derivative. And and I what I did is I turned on. See, I'm looking for what is the particle's velocity when the ex particle had no acceleration. So in other words, we're looking for where does the acceleration or the second derivative equal zero. So um, I had a graph. I had a graph these two functions, and then I went second. I went second calc, and I'm looking for a zero. And I had to make sure that I was on my y3 line on my second derivative. And it's asking me what's my left bound, and asked me what was my right bound, and I made sure I did that. Then it asked me, well, where do you think it is? And I I, I just hit enter. You can move it back there if you want, but you can just hit enter. And then it gave me the zero. So this t value or x value is the time when the acceleration is zero. And I want to find out what the velocity is at that time, which is this function here. So all you got to do is hit the up arrow. And the calculator keeps, as long as you just hit the up arrow, notice how the x values are the same. But here's the y value on that velocity graph. So that's that is the particle's velocity when the acceleration is zero, and I didn't have to do any algebraic manipulation. So I encourage you to try this and get this to work. So um, I, for this problem, I'm using a little bit different feature, and I'm not sure how much you've used. I don't think I've, I showed you this last year, maybe. Again, we want to use our calculator to figure out the... the um, we're in the particle moving to the right, so when is the velocity positive? So one way to do this is with this table feature. So I put the function into, into y1, and then I still get the derivatives being graphed. And uh, then the way you access the table feature in your calculator, if you press second and then window, you see where it says table set up? That'll kick you up to this screen. And because I'm looking for some very specific values, I change my independent variable, my x values, to ask, and then when it's, all I have to do is type in, I'm going to type in these numbers, and it'll kick out the output automatically for me for these, for these three values. Okay? So here's what the calculator gave me. Um, I typed in 1, hit enter, it filled it in, 2, and so on and so forth. So they're asking me, when is the particle moving, let's see, when is the particle to the right of the y-axis and speeding up? So if it's to the, remember, y1 is my position function. So right of the, right the y-axis means x will be positive. So at t equals 3 and at t equals 5, those are out because those are, those are negative numbers. Those are the left of the x-axis. And then we're going to decide when it's speeding up. And you remember that work I did earlier here in this video. Um, if your velocity and your acceleration are the same sign, it's speeding up. So at t equals 1 or x equals 1, t equals 1, uh, I'm to the right of the x-axis and it's speeding up. 
at t equals 3, or at t equals 2, I'm also to the right of the x-axis, and it's speeding up because both of those are negative. Um, at t equals 4, um, I am to the right of the x y axis, but the velocity is positive, the acceleration is negative, so there it's slowing down. So that so looks like my only answer is at t equals 1 and at t equals 2. So I hope that helps you get gain some um, facility with a calculator because it's a great tool, especially when it's a miserable function. Okay, so I hope that helps. Uh, start working on the homework.